In the commentary position of Kelvin Tatum and Tony Millard, can Scott Nichols win the first ever race in Australia? We'll have to see. Scott Nichols here in red. Welcome indeed to Stadium Australia, the first ever Aussie Grand Prix. It's a cool spring overcast evening, not exactly Aussie weather. Kelvin Tatum's alongside me, Kelvin. Scotty for this one. David White is Victor's Klingberg on the outside. That man, Mick Paul, in his home state here in Australia. But this is the first race, the first race in Stadium Australia. A great start for Scott Nichols in red on the inside. In blue, tuck it in, Christoph Tegelski coming through in white. That's Victor's Klingberg with the battle, Mick Pauls at the back, perhaps out class, but look at the class of the man out front, Scott Nichols oh, Kelvin, look at that. Superb start from Scotty Nichols, a lot of action going in there for the second and third spots, but Scotty looks good out front at the moment, the track's very slick, and they're struggling to find uh, traction on this track, but uh, so far Scott looks good out in front. Yes, a track not particularly wide, but Scott Nichols already feeling pretty much at home. That man is blue, Christoph Sigelski, a fair amount of Polish support here in Stadium Australia. Remember, the first two march on, the last two, they will have to go again to stay in the event. That's the format in Speedway Grand Prix Series. But with three laps complete, Scott Nichols is absolutely will perfect. He enjoyed the practice, the Adams was best at that, but Scott Nichols has made use of the practice to show just what he could do in this very first heat. We may not have a proliferation of British talent here, but the first one, Scott Nichols, has won the first speedway race in the Australian Grand Prix, ahead of Christoph Sikelski in second place, Mick Paul getting third in front of Nicholas Klingberg. But a magnificent ride by this man, Scott Nichols. What a ride from pillar to post, from gate to checkered flag. Scott Nichols doing exactly what he wants. Efforts in that grand final back in August. Sebastian Ulebeck from Poland goes in gate two, struggling to stay in the Grand Prix next season. Gate three, Todd Wiltshire, another local lad, of course, from here in Sydney. On the outside, from Mildura, Jason Lyons, of course, the Bellevue rider. So we've public rider, Lucas Dribble, but uh, certainly there we see Todd Wiltshire, the familiar number eight. He's worn that number throughout the Grand Prix series as Todd Wiltshire. Twice times an Australian champion. Oh, problems champion. to Jason Lyons. His bike's packed up there, Tony. Looks like he's going to be under... Well, they're going to go with Adam, I think. Yes, 33 riders. Jason Lyons officially will get last place. He's not out of the Grand Prix, but it's a pace fly up on three riders. Lucas Dribble, a near perfect start from gate one. Track by the man in white, Todd Wiltshire. But look at the battle joint oh. there. Real they go on the outside. No space at all. But Wiltshire there is squeezed to the back in the white helmet colours. Ulebeck in blue holding on. But the man is setting the pace. From gate one, Lucas Dribble has got it just about right. Yeah, great start from gate one again. Dribble making the most of that. Superb move for Mullemek. He just shoved Wiltshire out the way as they went into turn three for the first time. As we saw in the opening race, Tony, again, the track is very slick. The boys are struggling to find grip. But Lucas Dribble is stretching his lead again with every turn of his wheel. A real battle in second place. Wiltshire in the white is putting his man under pressure. Sebastian Ulebeck, the man in blue there. A real battle is going on. But out front, with just a lap to go, Lucas Dribble is looking fast. Lucas Dribble is looking superb. And Lucas Dribble only has half a lap now before he gets the checkered flag. For the second time tonight, one from gate one on the inside. Lucas Dribble in red takes it. Man in blue, Sebastian Ulebeck, the wheelie across the line there. Sebastian Ulebeck gets second place in blue. Todd Wiltshire, the local favourite from Sydney, in third place in white. No such luck for Jason Lyons. He will go again in heat number five from gate three to keep his place in the Grand Prix. But this man, Lucas Dribble, has earned the inside gate. Johnson in the blue helmet colours, the Swede. I believe he has a chance of being a world champion in years to come, perhaps a natural successor to Tony Ricardson. In white, it's Bo Brahel, a fair following for the Czech Republic rider as well. Our starting marshal moves away. Name back is the Adams of Game 1, trying to creep, not making it, but he does now. And once again, he's made it from the inside. But in yellow, Andy Smith is riding for his life. And Andy Smith in second place there in yellow and black is tracking this man in red, but now coming through in blue and well is Andreas Johnson to put him yeah, on the Andy, Andy Smith. Smith has packed up at the back. Oh, dear, oh dear, it looks like his chain's gone. Yeah, off. rear chain off. It looked like the Johnson mayor actually collided with him, and uh, he's just related to the referee who is English, but uh, out front, Lee Adams looks good now. Yes, Lee Adams in the red helmet, colour pursued there, but Andy Smith is absolutely furious. 
and Cody Steele are British referee. And he's trying to point out to him that somebody removed his chain by that collision. It was no fault of his that he was out, but this man is going to take no notice of that. The yellow flag shows just one lap to go as he goes across the line. Andy Smith is furious, but Lee Adams into the final lap here in front. The man in blue in second place is Andreas Johnson. Both of these are going to march on to the next stage with some comfort. Andy Smith will have to go again in heat six. But Lee Adams, the cheers from Stadium Australia. The wheelie greets the efforts of an Australian in his home country. And Lee Adams finishes ahead of Andreas Johnson. Bo Brahel gets the third place in white. But Lee Adams will be absolutely delighted with that. The first winner of a Speedway Grand Prix race to come from Australia in Australia. About that, I'm sure. But uh, look, there's the incident. And uh, certainly disappointment there. Andreas Johnson was gliding with Andy Smith. Enough to know Andreas Johnson threw it in second place. Mikhail Carson on the inside in red. Gate 3, Matty Furrier comes the media in white on the outside in yellow. Steve Johnson from Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. Johnson gets the flyer, but Carlson, so in where it matters, the inside gate. Johnson will put him under pressure, but coming through in oh! white, passing his way through. Matty Furrier has written in Australia before as part of Ivan Major's troop. But look at that. Matty Furrier goes from last to first. And that the surprise of the Grand Prix already, Kelvin. Yeah, he went from third to first, but certainly a brilliant first corner. Got his wheels in line early. We've seen that earlier in the uh, with Ulamek. He forced his way by. That pushed Michael Carlson out of the uh, favoured inside groove and allowed Steve Johnson to get through to second place. Well, it will, and it'll mean more because Michael Carlson there will have to go again to stay in the Grand Prix if he doesn't get by this man, Steve Johnson, in yellow. But Johnson is battling for his life. It's allowed Matty Furrier there in the white helmet colours to take it as he pleases. With a lap to go, Matty Furrier will win his first ever Grand Prix individual race, and that'll be quite an achievement for the Slovenian. But Steve Johnson, remember him, the Oxford captain, a man from Kalgoorlie in Western Australia, is going to move on a notch, and Michael Carlson's going to be third. Winner in white, Matty Furrier has won his first ever Grand Prix race. A fabulous ride by the Slovenian rider there. And what an effort there. Matty Furian is winning that in white. Steve Johnson in second place in yellow. He goes on to heat number seven. Hasn't ridden, of course, in Britain for some while. He wears the red helmet colour. Gate two for the Czech Republic, Bo Brahel. Gate three is Jason Lyons, who didn't manage a start in his first race. The man from Mildura and Desperate. Two Grand Prix points in third place. There's Jason Crump. You see watching from the sideline. Our starting marcher moved away. Up by the tapes again from the inside gate. Big Paul, but real problems from over hell this time. Jason Lance, the man in the white helmet colour, is putting Big Paul under pressure. It's Aussies one and two. The Sydney side of Big Paul in front. The man from Mildura in second place. And Bobra Hell could be tumbling out of this Grand Prix. To be perfectly honest, I think Bobra hadn't turned his fuel and it looked like he ran out of fuel going to the first corner because he'd made a great start. But Mick Paul's out front. They've watered the track. It looks a little bit greasy. But uh, at this point in time, it looks like both Aussies are going to move through to the next stage of the Grand Prix. Well, again, the inside gate telling the only man that's beat the hoodoo is Matty Burnham when he won the previous race heat four from gate three. But this time, the man from the inside gate Mick Paul, the Sydney Sider, is taking the track by storm. The fans are enjoying this. They want it to be an Aussie night at the moment with a lap to go. It's Aussies one and two in this heat number five. Mick Paul in the red helmet colour from Sydney. The man in the white helmet colour, Jason Lyons from Mildura. The two wild cards are going to march on. And Bo Brahel has finally packed up. Looks like he's got a puncher as well to compound his problems. But no such trouble for that man, Mick Paul. The red helmet colours winning it ahead of Jason Lance in white and Bo Brahel will get two Grand Prix points and be eliminated from this but the two wild cards racing against each other here will march on to the next stage and well they'll be delighted with that and so too Swede who misses Wolverhampton goes from gate two Nicholas Klingberg gate three and Andy Smith on the outside that's the lineup. this is heat number six remember the last one here in this one let's see what happens here this is heat number six our starting marshal moves away with a purpose nearly a full start for Wiltshire on the inside the tape's held by our referee Tony Steele but Wiltshire gets a fly in second place in blue Michael Carlton moving round to the outside Andy Smith trying to take advantage oh, of Griffin. oh dear it's 
it's all happening here because Wiltshire was caught unawares and Michael Carlson went through Andy Smith's right at the back Wiltshire's now gone back to third and he's got a battle for his life to stay into this as he comes through now into second place cutting inside Nicholas Klingberg Klingberg coming back again Tony what a great scrap for second place Wiltshire made a mistake on the first lap that allowed Klingberg through but Wiltshire again drifts wide it's all happening back there in second place yes the widow looks in despite disputedly here going to be Michael Carlson now has got it right but look at the battle in second place in red it's Todd Wiltshire in white it's Nicholas Klingberg it's Dick Dog Andy Smith is coming through suddenly Andy Smith has found speed from nowhere into the final lap they go it's Wiltshire battling in that second place way way out front is Michael Carlson in blue but it looks as if the Sydney Sider Todd Wiltshire will become the third Australian tonight so far to march on to the next stage let's look at second place oh it was definitely close there but certainly Todd Wiltshire got there and uh, certainly Todd Wiltshire showed his worth but Andy Smith well for Andy goodbye to the three-time British champion we've seen him racing for Oxford the British Elite League Steve Johnson's second place in heat four and so far it's been not a bad night for the Australians Kelvin no no they're hanging in there pretty well um, uh, one or two had a sort of a indifferent start particularly Wiltshire and Jason Lyons but both injuries have prevented him from Starting by switch away again. This is heat seven up by the table. It's a bit of a problem on the inside for Scott Nichols. This time he's got work to do. Good work for Lee Adams in the blue helmet colours. Nichols now will try and cut through on the inside. Oh! oh there Ulebeck. goes Sebastian Ulebeck. And our referee may have to stop this one with Ulebeck sitting on the track. I don't know what happened there, but the race is stopped by our referee, Tony Steele. And Sebastian Ulebeck bites the dust. Uh, he lifted coming out of the corner, Tony, and just lost control and bounced into the air fence. Fortunately, it is an air fence, but uh, what a start. Here we see it again. He's on the outside of Lee Adams in the blue helmet colour, and all of a sudden his bike just finds an extra bit of grip there, and he's out of control, slides across. There's no dirt out there to hold him in, and bang, into the fence. Fortunately, it's an air fence, and that absorbs the energy as you go in. But uh, I must say I was very impressed with the start that Lee Adams made out of gate two. He made it quite comfortably in front of the manoeuvre, the guy off of gate one. There we see it again on the outside. Ulamek just catching a little bit of grip, but there's no real um, uh, dirt on the outside. And you just see him literally just slide straight across. And it was quite a heavy impact, but he was quite clearly the man at, uh, at fault. And the referee really didn't have any uh, any problems in making that decision. There we see it again, the front end of the bike getting away from him. There's a little bit of greasy surface out there, and he just slides into the safety fence. Well, certainly the safety fence here. Remember the exclusion lights for Sebastian Ulbeck on the outside. That's Steve Johnson in yellow. Away goes our starting marshal. The tape's delayed again by our referee, Tony Steele. But up they go, and a good start by Scott Nichols this time. He's got the start he missed first time out, and now he's in pole position ahead of Lee Adams. And the man at the back in yellow, Steve Johnson, could be the first Aussie to go out of this Grand Prix, because these two in front are looking fast personified. Yeah, Nichols takes full advantage of his second chance there. Doesn't make the same mistake there. Holds it tight in the first corner. Doesn't allow Lee Adams to get up the inside. Adams is now tucked in in that second place, and really, the front two are pulling away from Johnson it could be all over for Steve here yes some 3,000 miles across country to count balling for Steve Johnson is his journey home but here now in red Scott Nichols the Ipswich rider is heading Lee Adams who races of course for Oxford in the British Elite League but Lee Adams of course Rob Mildura in Australia second place will be enough to take him on to heat 15 they go into the final lap here now. The yellow and black flag indicates the last lap of four. The man in red, the 13, is Scott Nichols. Tracking him every inch of the way in blue. That's Lee Adams. No risk need to be taken. Nichols is going to take the chicken flag. Adams does a wheelie across the line to celebrate moving on towards the main event. But going home time it is for the man in yellow and black. Steve Johnson, he wanted to compete in this Grand Prix. He took the place of Carl Stonehewer. But the glory here now, his second heat win of the night, belongs to Scott Nichols from Ipswich in the red helmet colours there. And he will march on to heat. ...in Britain uh, during this coming season just ending. Uh, he, in fact, was going to race for Eastbourne. We wonder if he'd be back in the British League earlier on with Andy Smith and the removal of his chain.
Up by the tape, delayed again, but a flyer on the inside for Lucas Fimmel in red. Now pursued from the outside by Andrews Johnson in yellow. Back in third place in blue, that's Matty Furrier. In a white, bringing up the rear, Christoph Zagelski has a lot of work to do. He won't be out of the Grand Prix, but he'll face an uphill task. But Lucas Grimmel is looking impressive in front, and Zagelski goes by there in the third place, and will now try and find a challenge on Andrews Johnson. Yeah, Lucas Schimmel out front again, that inside start working well for him. Andreas Johnson did mighty well there from the outside, made a great first corner and cut back up the inside. Looks now he's uh, settled in the second spot nicely. And Furian, having won the first race, he's now stuck at the back in the blue helmet colour. Doesn't look quite so impressive this time out. No, Matty Furian will have the opportunity to go again if he finishes third and get an inside gate in heat 12 to help him. But now as they go into the final lap, it's Lucas Grimmel from the Czech Republic, already qualified for the Grand Prix next year. Could get double qualification by finishing in the top 10 if he keeps going like this here tonight in Stadium Australia. Lucas Dribble in the red helmet colours. The chequered flag is there for him in second place in yellow. That's Andreas Johnson takes that. Both march on. Christoph Sigelski and Andreas Johnson. Uh, well, Christoph Sigelski and Matty Furian will have to go again. Uh, an opportunity to... Uh to put one over on your big rivals. Looking across the tapes, Tony Ricard of the world champion goes on the inside. Jason Crump, who goes into this meeting at third place in the standings, only three points ahead of the man in gate three, Ron Sullivan. Brilliant Holter, who's been so impressive this season. Go three plus big guns underneath him. Well, they, they go, and the tapes come up very quickly, but not as quick as Tony Ricard, and shoots away from the inside gate. Class again for Tony Ricardson, battling through. It's second place in blue, Jason Crump. Rudy Holt to go round the outside, but Ron Sullivan holding third place. And it's one, two, three, Ricardson, Crump, Sullivan, much as you would have predicted, perhaps. Yeah, Tony Ricardson's bike absolutely launched off the start. He's hit the front, Crumpy's giving chase. He's uh, snuck into second place, and Sullivan there in third. But so far, Ricardson looks like he's got it pretty much under control. Well, we know how Tony Ricardson wants to dominate. He's going to ensure that he has the inside gate next time out when he will race in heat 13 if he wins this one. But Jason Crump, to the cheers of the Australian fans here, is certainly putting him under pressure. They're a bit quiet for Ron Sullivan, but it's Crump that's doing the damage, and Crump trying to make ground on Tony Ricardson. Ricardson in red leads. Crump in the blue helmet colour, second. In third place, in the white helmet colour, it's Ron Sullivan. Sweeten in front, Australia two and three. Ready Holter at the back in yellow. But certainly Tony Ricardson knows what he's doing, and Tony Ricardson has won a heat in yet another country. And Tony Ricardson in red, the world champion, now five times world champion. He shakes hands with the man in blue, Jason Crump in second place. Ron Sullivan, third in white, is the way inside. A former world champion in Billy Hamill goes from gate two in blue for the USA. Another former world champion, Greg Hancock, from the USA as well, goes in white. Nicky Pedersen's on the outside. And still, well, that inside gate has dominated Kelvin, bit surprising. But here we go now. This is heat number 10. A really good race Whoa. at Prospect. A little bit of creeping for Billy Hamill, who had to go back and was caught unawares. But Thomas Gollum it is, who's out in front. The challenge now goes to Nicky Pedersen in second place. A tough rider is Nicky Pedersen. It won't be an easy ride, this, for Thomas Gollum, with Pedersen in his tracks. But the two Americans are back three and four in blue. Billy Hamill testing out the track in white. Greg Hancock, remember, they're only battling for gate placings and really not too important, it's getting used to the track that counts, but Golob here, he doesn't want to be beaten. No, certainly didn't, it came under a lot of pressure from Pedersen there, Billy Hamill rolling hectically at the start, was very fortunate to get away with it, I thought for a moment he was going to touch the tapes with his front tyre, but so just avoided that, Golob hit the front, Pedersen came round the outside, put him under pressure, but so they've settled down nicely now. Yes, I thought that Thomas Goller was going to be given a rough ride by the man in yellow, Nicky Pedersen, in second place. But he's relented now. He's, he's still held time, back. <laughs> I don't think he's going to get near enough to him now, but Nicky Pedersen will take that second place. It will earn him an inside gate next time out. But certainly that will be the way that Thomas Goller will benefit as well. As Thomas Goller in red, takes the checkered flag. Second place in yellow as Goller does the wheelie. Goes indeed to Nicky Pedersen. Third place in blue, Billy Hamill. Greg Hancock at the back in white. As I say, they are racing for places in their next goalie. A long way home if he doesn't make the first two in this one. This is Heat 11. Steve Johnson on the inside. Matty Bird, gate two in blue. Gate three, Big Paul in white. Todd Wiltshire in yellow and black outside. Ever a race. Could be one the outside. Todd Wiltshire can make it quickly from that gate. 
up by the Saints and away they go. Wiltshire struggles to hold it down but comes across in second place and will now try to cut inside Steve Johnson. But Steve Johnson in the red helmet colours is leading this bunch here. It's Australia 1, round the outside in white, trying to put him under pressure goes Mick Paul. But coming through in yellow, that's Tom Wiltshire. The man in blue, Matty Foyan, could be disappearing home to Slovenia after this one. But it's Aussies at the moment, 1, 2 and 3. Yeah, Stevie Johnson making that gate one work for him. He's coming kind of under a lot of pressure from Todd Wiltshire, who made a great start from the outside. Mick Paul isn't out of it, though. He's coming through here. Terrific ride from Mick Paul to squeeze his way into second place. I think you'll find it's Matty Bird in blue. Oh, I do apologise. <laughs> In red, red there, Steve Johnson, though, having it all his own way. A real battle in second place here. But look at the effort there. And Matty Furian in the blue helmet colours in second place. And Matty Furian tracking him as they go into the final lap. Matty Furian has suddenly found speed and power from nowhere. And it's going to be disappointment unless Tom Wiltshire could do something desperate here with the yellow helmet colours. He could go out of the Grand Prix. Matty Furian springing a surprise. And the chequered flag there goes indeed to the winner, Steve Johnson, in red. But Matty Furian coming through into second place produced something from nowhere. Steve Johnson greets the cheers, the man from Kalgoorlie. Well, disappointment for the two men from New South Wales. Mick Paul from Gosford, Todd Wiltshire from Newcastle. Paul has already gone out. Sigelski on the inside, Ulebeck gate two, Michael Carlson gate three, Jason Lyons on the outside, the man from Bellevue. Yeah, it uh, does appear that the inside is now moving away. Takes delay by referee Tony Steele. Up they fly now. Great start by Ulebeck in blue. Tracked by Sigelski. Round the outside in yellow goes Jason Lyons. Lyons trying to find grip, finding grip and speed, but coming through in red Sigelski. Right at the back in white, Michael Carlson. Disappointment for him. Remember, the last two would be eliminated, and Michael Carlson won't want to be one of them. No, he certainly won't be. He's in trouble at the moment at the back, but uh, just as I'm saying, the in middle two starts aren't very good. Ulebeck just blows that theory out of the water. Makes a fantastic start, but here comes Sigelski. Sigelski, great move on the inside. Poland, one and two, Sebastian Ulebeck in blue, Sigelski in red, the man in third place now, Michael Carlson, has a chance of qualifying, he's going wider, he's trying to pick up speed, he is picking up speed, but he faces a battle with the two poles in front of him, no chance for Jason Lyons at the back, but there goes Carlson, the challenge for second place, could see Sigelski miss out, as Carlson moves into that second yeah, place. Yeah, Sigelski made a fatal mistake there, he tried to go round the outside of for Ulebeck, that left a big hole for Carlson, and Coulson took full advantage of that and all of a sudden now Michael Coulson's made his way through into second place. Oh, a challenge here, Michael Coulson moving into first place and oh. final line. I think Sigelski got second place there and it'll be Ulebeck that misses out because it looked to me as if the man in red, Christoph Sigelski, just nicked second place, desperately tight and Michael Coulson came from last to first to make sure he moves on. A tremendous final lap for Michael Back out front, Lions is early in the race. And uh, Ulamek looks like he's got it under control, but as we know, this race really does very much turn on its head as, uh, as the laps progress. So well, I think the referee is going to watch the action again, Kelvin, right. because it's obviously desperately close, almost a photo finish. And our ref Carlson in white, he's definitely the heat winner. Now, second place, who gets it? Did Ulamek slow up? Oh! oh could be dead heat, I don't know what I, I do with that. That is extraordinarily close, I think. Uh, it's sort of like the whip. At this moment, Sigelski looks like he's in front. He just runs out of momentum now. Ulamex uh, looks like he's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit there, but it's Let's watch it frame by frame, Kelvin. Ulamek. Oh, Ulamek. Just, uh, Sebastian Ulamek. Ulamek's blue. got it. Ulamek got it in blue in second place, surely. Our referee, Tony Steele, will be the man that makes that decision. Who gate two? Scott Nichols, the surviving British hope, goes in a white gate three, Sebastian Ulamek. Away goes our starting marshal, the riders look down, they almost squeeze the tape in and smack it out of it. And away they go, and the man in blue, Rick Hancock, is there. Scott Nichols is right at the back. Rickardson has work to do. In yellow, Sebastian Ulebeck battling with Rickardson. Rickardson goes into second place, tracking Greg Hancock. Lots of work for Scott Nichols in white to do yet. Yeah, Scotty Nichols has got through into third place, but Rickardson missed the start there. Hancock made a good one. He squeezed by Ulebeck down the back straight, got into second spot, but uh, Hancock looks good out front. 
Yes, Greg Hancock from the USA, the Blue Helmet colours, and now Ricard's are being squeezed by Scott Nichols. Scott Nichols putting the five-time world champion under pressure. Ricardson has the red helmet, Nichols has the white helmet. Right at the back in yellow, Sebastian Ulebeck. But now Ricardson in red is challenging Greg Hancock out front, and it's going to be a battle yet, but Ricardson trying to get through on the inside to ensure himself with gate one in his next race, and that's what he's trying for. Absolutely, yeah, that gate one in his next ride is very important. Um, if you finish second, you get gate three. That's why he's trying so desperately hard to get by Hancock. Hancock will want to hang on. Looks like Hancock's going to get it. Yes, Greg Hancock wins it. Second place, Tony Ricardson in the red helmet colours. Scott Nichols gets third. Will have to go again. Sebastian Ulamek right at the back. But a Nicky Pedersen off the inside there in the red helmet colour. He's got the uh, favoured inside start. Sullivan in blue. He's got under. He seems to be under pressure. We saw him earlier. from the other. Starting marshals moved away, away they go, again on the inside, a good start by Nicky Pedersen, Ron Sullivan's in second place in blue, trying to challenge up the inside, round the outside in white goes Lucas Dribble in Oh! Great Nicky move Pedersen from squeezed out there completely. Yeah, lifted coming off the corner, Pedersen got out of shape, that allowed Dribble through, and now Sullivan's taking full advantage of it, Pedersen just seems to be overriding at the moment and uh, wasted that inside start. Nicky Pedersen was all over the track there. He gave ample opportunity, and Ron Sullivan has taken advantage. The man's seen oh. the front. Oh, look at that. Pedersen's all over the track, and Pedersen will have to think again before his next race because Lucas Dribble in white is heading down that back straight. The man in blue, Ron Sullivan, in second place, both marching on to be one ride from the semi-finals if it stays like this. But Dribble's got it right when it matters, and Lucas Dribble, head down, goes into the the final lap, leading by some 20 metres from Ron Sullivan. Sullivan now under pressure from Matty Furrier. Could Furrier produce another shot here in the yellow helmet colours? Ron Sullivan has to hold him off. Ron Sullivan will hold him off. Ron Sullivan in blue takes second place. Matty Furrier just gets third place in yellow ahead of Nicky Pedersen, who was all over the track. But a tremendous ride by this man, Lucas Dribble, to take the chequered flag. It means he gets an inside gate in Heat 20 as a result of his efforts there. That could be vitally... Dribble around the outside. There, Pedersen lifts down the back straight. That allows two riders to go underneath him. He'll be bitterly disappointed about that. Lucas Dribble can't believe his luck. He's hit the front. Pedersen then comes back in to put Sir Ryan Sullivan under a lot of pressure there. Just for a moment, it looked like they may actually hook up together. But uh, I don't know what uh, Nicky Pedersen had done to his bike, but there again we see him getting out of shape. Maybe he's just uh, overgeared the bike or done something, but certainly in that race he was far from perfect. And uh, it will be a shame for him because he was out front, but uh, Ryan Sullivan did uh, hang on to that second place. Burian coming through. The red helmet colours goes from the inside. He came second in heat number nine. Billy Hamill, a former world champion, of course, Billy Hamill, a great world champion he was, and uh, certainly his efforts will be appreciated here. He's in gate two, the Adams gate three. Tough heat, this one, Tony, isn't it? Good quality line up here. This would grace an A final probably anywhere in the world. White in the first two places. Up by the tapes, away they go. Good start on the inside in red by Jason Crump. Crump picks it up, moving into second place in blue, Billy Hamill. Round the outside in yellow, Michael Carlson. Michael Carlson has gone by. Right at the back in white is Lee Adams. Disappointment for the Australians from Victoria, but certainly the men from uh, well up on the Gold Coast. That's Jason Crump out front in first place. A good start by him, and he's keeping it going. Yeah, good, uh, good start from the inside. Billy Hamill put him under pressure, but uh, both uh, Billy Hamill and Lee Adams seem to get uh, in each other's way around the first corner. That allows now Carlson into the action, and Michael Carlson again showing good form here, but Crump's out front, he looks strong, looks fast, could be his night. Yes, well Jason Crump leads down the back straight for Michael Carlson, looks as if the back two, Hamill in the blue helmet colours, Adams in the white, will have to settle for racing again in heat 17 and 18 to keep them in the charts here. But these two out front now are within one race surely of the semi-finals. Crump has time to look back. As he does so, he sees Michael Carlson in the yellow helmet colour. But Jason Crump, certainly the cheers there as he has time to look back. The wheelie across the line for Jason Crump winning it in the red helmet colours. And certainly a tremendous ride by him. As I said before, from pillar to post, the clinched fist shows just how much it might mean to this man, who, although he was born in England, is an Australian through and through. When he holds up the doorway, gate two in blue. Andreas Johnson, the Swede, goes to gate three on the outside. Steve Johnson, another competitive race. Certainly is. Gollum on the inside. Look for him, but Johnson's done extremely well as a replacement. 
He's doing good. He's the Aussie boy in this one. Golov looks down, away they go, the tapes come up quickly, but Golov is very quickly away, the red helmet colour in front, into second place in blue, as the man at the back, Steve Johnson, oh! goes wide. look at that from Rudy Holter, almost coming off, that allowed the man in white to come through, that's of course Andreas Johnson, but now it's a ding-dong battle in second place, but they're way behind this man out front, Thomas Golov, but look at that battle, in blue, Holter, oh, goes Rudy Holter, his hopes are dashed against the fence here, a referee may have to stop this, but Thomas Golov won't want it stopped, out go the red flags, the race is stopped, and I'm sure that Rudy Holter will be excluded for that, he ran out of space, he ran out of dirt, and he ran out of skill at the wrong time, Kelvin. Well, he certainly, it was very similar to the Ulumek incident early on, he lifted, he's come out of the corner, here they are, Janssen and Ulumek, uh, so not Ulumek, uh, Holter on the outside, now he, all of a sudden you'll see him lift, he runs out of room, nothing to hold him up and just slides backwards into the fence. We did actually see on the first lap also Golov and Halter as they exited the first corner, lifting quite severely as they went down the back straight. And the track may just be breaking up a little bit where you've got the rubber laid down and the loose surface. It's obviously catching these riders out. Here we see it again. Halter on the outside, grabbing a too much grip, running out of room, backwards into the fence and his race is all over. Well, he looked at one time as if uh, he may have been touched there by Andres Johnson, but I think he was well clear, and I think he just came off of his own accord, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't uh, He didn't actually get a nudge from Johnson, but uh, again, some of these boys seem to be struggling with conditions. I think you were right initially, Tony, by saying that he just wasn't aware of the regulation at Grand at Prix level. Two riders, Thomas Gollum and Andres Johnson. Gollum in red, Andres Johnson in white. The remaining riders contesting this. First and second place will go to heats 20 and 19, respectively. Gollum in the red helmet colours. Andres Johnson in white. They will use this, surely, to get used to the track, because it's quite important. They know that both are now just one race from the semi-finals. I don't think this will be a particularly fast one, Kelvin. Well, Johnson's putting Gollum under quite a lot of pressure. There may well be a significant advantage for winning this race were by uh, the gate positions in the next round but certainly Johnson looks like he's quite impressive putting um, uh, Golub under some pressure here comes Johnson on the inside well you talk about the gate positions now it does mean the man on the inside or well, the man who wins it will get a blue gate in the next round that's uh, gate two and the man who comes second will get an outside gate in yellow so that's what they're racing for and that's what Golub is after Certainly gate two, better than gate three perhaps, but line of rest here. I just wonder how they're thinking about this. Thomas Golub is now in second place. Round the outside he comes. He goes ahead of Andreas Johnson. It's a ding-dong battle on the final lap here. The man in white is Andreas Johnson. The man in red is Thomas Golub. And I wonder if Golub has got that worked out, because Johnson it is that wins it in white. Thomas Golub, second in red. And I wonder if Thomas Golub wanted to get that outside gate. What his thinking was, I don't know, but it does mean that Andres Johnson will certainly get gate two in his next ride in heat 20. It's going to be tough for those guys from the outside. All line up, Scott Nichols of Britain on the inside, Lee Adams for the Australian for Victoria. Jura, he comes from, he goes to gate two in blue. Nicky Pettis in the Dane gate three, Rudy Holter, the Norwegian on the outside. Truly multi-national lineup for this heat 17. The last two will be eliminated, the first two for one race from the semi-final. This is how it stands, up by the tapes, away they go. Another good start on the inside, Scott Nichols, the Brits in front in red. Scott Nichols, can he hold it? Round the outside in blue goes Lee Adams, but he's bolted by Holter, who comes through into second place in yellow. A ding-dong battle at the back, but Scott Nichols is where it counts. Yeah, I think Lee Adams made a mistake there. He chose to go round the outside in the first corner. I think he should have cut back. That allowed the two Scandinavians to dive underneath and going down the back straight. Nichols out front, he looks like he's got it sewn up, but Rennie Holter, don't count him out, he's looking good at the moment. Scott Nichols seems to know the line he wants, Scott Nichols in red leads, in second place, Rennie Holter, the Norwegian, if these two stay here, there'll be one race from the semi-finals, the battle is joined at the back, Nicky Pedersen's the man in white, Lee Adams, he's the man in blue, work to do, but Scott Nichols in red, with one lap to go, Scott Nichols, 342 metres, from the moment he went across that line, he's going to finish in the first two. And Scott Nichols is having a marvellous night here in Stadium Australia. And Scott Nichols in the red helmet colours has the chequered flag there. And he holds it in yellow in second place. Third place goes to the man in white, Nicky Pedersen. Disappointment for Lee Adams at the back in blue. But a tremendous ride by the only Brit remaining in this Australian Grand Prix. And Scott Nichols, what a night he's had. Now on the gate two as well, so... 
Another big heat coming up here. Matty Fayne on the inside. Steve Johnson, gate two. Sebastian Ullum at gate three. And former world champion Billy Hamill. He goes from the outside. Billy Hamill, of course, uh, well, won that world title back in uh, 1997, I think it was. There we are, that's the lineup. This is Heat 18. Remember, the last two eliminated. The first two will be one race for the semi. Great start by Matty Byrne in red. Tracked down the outside in yellow and coming through. Billy Hamill, a brilliant ride by Hamill. Blown through them like a knife through butter. Back in third place, Steve Johnston. Right at the back in white, Sebastian Ulamek. But a real battle out front. Byrne in red is battling with Billy Hamill, the American in yellow. Look at this effort out front, and Hamill is going well. Yeah, real gutsy first corner there from Hamill. He, he sort of like force his way through into first place. Burian hanging on to that second spot. The two boys behind him seem to be struggling. But certainly Billy Hamill seems to think got things weighed up now. Well, for Matty Burian, it would be his best performance in Grand Prix racing since he started riding if it stays like this. But Matty Burian, well, he's got to finish in second place. And the man who's challenging him, Steve Johnston, now there as they go into the final lap. Billy Hamill stolen a march out front. Billy Hamill in the yellow helmet colour. One race from the semi. So too will Matty Furian in second place if he takes it there. A great night for Matty Furian. And certainly the Slovenian showing what perhaps we missed. But look at hey! the oh! oh! He's it on the line. And coming through in blue in second place is Steve Johnson there. And Billy Hamill won it. But what a disappointment for Matty Furian. I spoke too soon to suggest his best ever Grand Prix. But Steve Johnson... May have been late early on, but Steve Johnston, the crowd, is well and truly behind him. Fantastic reception for Steve Johnston there. What a performance. Right at the death there, coming through to second place. Great lips on it all one, but certainly Steve Johnston kept trying. He just, he just literally kept plugging away, and then all of a sudden he took full advantage of that mistake. He's on the blue rubber there, got the extra drive off the corner, and forced his way through to second place. Great result for him. Gate two with the blue helmet cards. He won heat 15. Ron Sullivan, who came second in heat 14, goes to gate three in white on the outside. Thomas Golob, his second place. Jason Crump coming out of gates one and two. Big heat, race here. Heat 19, this is six more to go in this Australian Grand Prix. They're fidgeting on the inside. Crump can't sit still. They look down at the back, it's up by the tapes and away they go. Great start by Jason Crump in blue. Back in third place is Greg Hancock in red now because the man in yellow is coming through Thomas Golob to relegate him to that position. In white, Ron Sullivan, as Kelvin said, under pressure, now picking a different line and going for the outside to see if he can get some grip. But a good start by the man in blue, Jason Crump. The crowd will love this one. Yeah, Crumpy flew off of gate two there, hit the front. Hancock there did uh, very well to protect his position from uh, Thomas Golob. He put him under a lot of pressure around the outside. And as I thought, possibly Sullivan off colour tonight. Didn't, uh, didn't get away at all well from gate three. To emphasise, it's not an elimination heat. Even the last two, the man in yellow, Thomas Golob, the man in white, Ron Sullivan, they will have another go. But the front two, the first two in this one, will go through to the semi-finals. A place in the last eight, the man in blue, Jason Crump, into the final lap. Ahead of the man in second place in red, that's Greg Hancock. These two going well. Hancock having a purple patch to the end of his season. But Jason Crump, the cheers of State of Australia, greets another Australian victory here in blue. Ahead of him in red, Greg Hancock, Ron Sullivan there, and Thomas Gollard bringing up the rear. But what a ride by Greg Hancock. Uh, what a ride by Jason Crump in blue to head Greg Hancock. We saw that clinch fist earlier on, and he now knows he's into the semi finals. One race for the final. Perhaps at 14, has been in fantastic form. Gate two is occupied by the Swede Andres Johnson in blue. Tony McCarton, already the world champion. Five times the world champion, the Swede. He goes to gate two. Start from there. What a third place again. The inside gate is the eliminator race in 22. Here we go. This is heat number 20 in blue. Great start for Andreas Johnson. Tony McCarson's going to have to go round the outside. He is going round the outside. But coming through to second place in red is Lucas Dribble. Rickardson struggling at the back. Rickardson has work to do. They're going to sort it out. Rickardson's going slower and slower. But there's now in blue. It's Andreas Johnson that picks it up ahead of Lucas Dribble. Oh, what a move is from Dribble. What a move from Dribble. He hits the front. Great turn. But Rickardson out the back. He's desperately who's actually moved through the third spot. He's keeping the outside line going. But a great battle up front between Johnson and Dribble.
what a night Lucas Dribble is having. I know that Kelvin was saying to me before the meeting, perhaps he'd be an outside choice to win this Grand Prix. And Lucas Dribble is showing the sort of form that could take the young Czech already qualified. Look at Ricardson on the outside, who's fading fast and at the moment is in last place here. And Ricardson is really struggling. Lucas Dribble going well. Yeah, Dribble out front, and Ricardson keeps going for that outside line, and he's gone backwards in the last lap. Carlson's got through the third spot, but uh, they'll go, those boys will have another chance, but certainly the man of the moment was Dribble out front. What a ride he did there to pass Johnson and win that race. He'll be delighted to get through to the semis. A tremendous ride indeed by this man, Lucas Dribble. It's all going well for him to go through to the semi-finals, and disappointment for Tony Ricardson, who will face another go in an elimination heat. He will have to finish in the first two to make his heat. He had that gate three and he just didn't get into the race at all. He did try that outside line for four laps and uh, he just didn't quite manage to make it work for him. Well, Ron Sullivan, who goes to the inside here, still battling with Jason Crump in that second place. Tony McCarson goes in blue gate two. The survivor duty is in England. Our starting marshal moves away. Tony Steele, the referee, has his fingers on the button. Away they go. A good start by Ron Sullivan in red. Tony McCarson's in second place in blue. In third place in white is Scott Nichols. Scott has work to do. A problem for Steve Johnson at the back. But certainly here, well, out front in red. Ron Sullivan looking the best he has tonight. But look at the battle in second place. Scotty Nichols through into second place. Great move, Ricardson lifted coming off that corner. Scott Nichols took full advantage of it. The new British champion threw into second place in front of the reigning world champion. Great move for Scott. Could this be Tony Ricardson failing to make the semi finals? Scott Nichols, the surviving Brit. No Mark Moran, remember. Can Nichols hang on? Nichols and Ricardson. Nichols in the white helmet colour. Ricardson in the blue helmet colour. Nichols of Britain. Ricardson of Sweden. Out front in red. Ron Sullivan is coasting away, but with a lap to go, Scott Nichols in second place, holding off the five times world champion Tony Ricardson. A truly brilliant ride here by Scott Nichols in second place. He's going to take him to the semi finals. Tony Ricardson is out. Ron Sullivan wins it in red. Scott Nichols second in white. Ricardson disappears and Ricardson's disappointment. He is a five times world champion, but he's out of this Grand Prix. Ron Sullivan has it very much for the taking. Australians hopes with him and Jason Crump, but what a run. 22, the same pattern as the last one. It's an eliminator, the first two to the semi-finals. The last two go home. Michael Carlson, the Swede, in red on the inside. Thomas Gollum goes from gate two in blue from Poland. Billy Hamilton. It's only Michael Carlson on the inside. Look for him. Yes, Michael Carlson and Gollum, there's going to be a battle there. Carlson gets the drop in red. Second place in blue is Thomas Gollum, moving through the inside in white. Billy Hamill, round the outside in yellow, goes Freddie Holter. Hamill needs space, he's not going to get it. Gollum's in second place. The man in red out front, Michael Carlson, set for a place in the final if he holds it here. Stolen a march on this home straight to lead ahead of Thomas Gollum in blue. Yeah, great start for Michael Carlson, hit the front. Gollum's coming under all sorts of pressure, but Holter's just lifted, coming out of that corner. Lost his momentum. Gollum seems to be riding just off that inside line, encouraging the boys to put him under a lot of pressure. Billy Howell hasn't given up either. In red, the leader, Michael Carlson, by some distance in blue in second place is Gollum. Real work to do for the two guys at the back who face elimination and disappointment here in Stadium Australia. Just over a lap to go. Michael Carlson, the Swede, in red. We may have seen the eclipse of Tony Ricardson, but at least one Swede through to the semi finals here in Michael Carlson. Time to look back for Thomas Gollum there in the blue helmet colour in second place. He's going to clinch that second place, or is he just? No! Oh! Through in yellow, Gollum is beaten by Rene Holter coming through in yellow. I just wonder what went wrong there with Thomas Golov. He seemed to look down. He seemed to have it all worked out. And somehow from that final bend, Thomas Golov was beaten. This man doesn't care. This man has won it, Michael Carlson. But Rene Holter has made it through to the semis. And, well, two you might Here have we see it again, Tony. Uh, um, uh, Thomas Golov, as I was saying, was riding slightly wider. He missed, missed that blue groove as they came off the corner. And Rene Holter keeps his head down, gets that little bit of extra drive off that last corner and probably by the same sort of dip. Yes, he just... Ooh, that is close tight. Enough court, Kelvin, Crikey, isn't it? that is ever so tight. That's going to be a tough one for the referee to decide upon. But certainly, um, uh, Thomas Golov seemed to be nervous throughout the race. He was looking over his shoulder plenty of times. He seemed to be sort of unsettled by something. I don't know what, because he's looked pretty good tonight.
while Thomas Golob is looking at the big screen here in the stadium to see who's got second place. He thought he had. It's desperately tight. And, well, I wouldn't want to make that decision. Tony right. Steele's the man that's got to do it. And that's extraordinarily close. But Golob seemed to allow that situation to happen. He lost momentum throughout the race. And as they went across the line, from that angle, it looked possi it possibly that Hult has got it on the inside. But certainly... A great effort by Halter nonetheless, because uh, it looked like Golub had it all sewn up, but uh, Halter uh, never gave up, and uh, at the moment now it's, uh, it could well be him that's going through to the semi-final. Well, one Go thing we don't Golub looks, uh, Golub looks Golub's furious, it's yeah. been oh dear, oh dear. Looks like Halter may well have been given that second spot. Halter and Golub uh, has missed out on that semi-final spot, if that's the case. Well, I wonder if he took it too easy. I wonder if he was counting chickens. We know that Michael Carlson will join Jason Crump, Anthony Johnson and Ron Sullivan in our first semi-final. And it now looks as if the man is going to join uh, Lucas Dremel, Greg Hancock and Scott Nichols would in fact be the Aussie goes from gate two in blue. Anthony Johnson, the Swede, gate three. And the other Aussie, Jason Crump, well, he goes from the outside in yellow. Two Aussies, remember, both in this semi-final. The people in this stadium were settled for them, finishing first and second. He may be out, Tony Ricardson, but he's all smiles as five-time world champion. And it's Johnson Sweet. The starting mark has moved away. This is oh! Blue helmet colour, Ron Sullivan will surely be stopped for touching the tapes. And Ron Sullivan, if the referee stops that, he will be excluded, I think you'll find, Kelvin. Yeah, could well be, and that will be his uh, second place in the championship. Kiss goodbye, particularly if Frumpy gets through to the final. Just seemed to be a little bit uh, anxious there, tried to jump the start. Here we see it again, there he is. Yes, he touched the tapes. Tony Steele will have no option but to exclude him. And that'll be a bit, uh, that's a big, big blow for Ryan Sullivan. Well, Here we see it again. Watch him now, he tries to anticipate, drops the clutch too early, touches the tapes. I'm afraid he's gone, he's back to the pitch. His Grand Prix's all over. Well, certainly from Ron Sullivan's point of view, desperate disappointment. And as you say, Kelvin, if Jason Crump makes the final, he will move into second place. The mathematics as simple as that. If Jason Crump doesn't make the final, Ron Sullivan can still hold on to it by a point. Yeah, they haven't taken his bike. Yeah, he is excluded. Ollie Olsen, the race director of the Grand Prix, just telling Ryan to get off the track. Sullivan can't believe it. But uh, the facts of the matter is the replay shows that his tyre, his front tyre, did just touch that tape. Uh, he will have no argument once he sees the replay. And although he's furious at the moment, I'm sure that uh, once he sees the replay, he'll have to accept that decision. To go above him now, Jason Crump needs 15 points. To obtain 15 points, he has to finish fourth in the final. And certainly Ollie Olsen and Ron Sullivan having a chat there with the referee, but no doubt he touched the uh, tape. I didn't touch the tape, so, you know, I can't see... Gosh, what a drama. Oh, come on, give me a, come on, give me a break. I mean, Jason got away with it last Grand Prix. Well, he's talking about it in the last Grand Prix, but Tony still wasn't the referee in the last Grand Prix. The referee was the pole on the check in the last Grand Prix. And Tony Steele, as our picture showed... ...to reverse the sequence either. And they're calling really hard to catch the one if he wants to. Drop some fuel in. Ron Sullivan and the referee talking on the phone. Well, this is the world silver and bronze medal. Regardless of this result, I'm going to take the entire country when I say how proud we are of these performances this year. Here it is again. Just freaks slightly. All his balls are out of not much doubt about that, Kelvin, is there? No, no argument there. As we, saw, the as, tape, yeah, as we saw initially, he did touch the tape. Whether there was a decision in the previous Grand Prix that a rider got away with touching the tape. That's uh, nothing to do with Mr. Steele's decision. He saw it. The front tire of uh, Sullivan's bike did touch the tapes. He's excluded. That is the rules. And although he's bitterly disappointed because he's now probably going to be... Rooney Holter again and get this wonderful opportunity to uh, transfer through to his first first day final, I think. Well, it certainly would be quite an effort for Rooney Holter. He has yet... He's never made a fine line. But away they go. The man in white is Anthony Johnson. But look on the inside in red. That's Rooney Holter. Holter first. Johnson second. Back in third place. Jason Crump. Could this be a shot? If it stays like this, Jason Crump won't make the final. And if Jason Crump... Oh, he does now. He goes through. And now work to do for Anthony Johnson. Because Crump is in the second place. And second place in this will be enough to give him second place in the Grand Prix series. Way out front. Rooney Holter on his way to his first day final but here the battle is joined for second place and that remaining place in the final yeah big mistake from Johnson he got through the second he's putting Crumpy under a lot of pressure but he did make that mistake that allowed Crump to get through the second spot 
He made a great start from gate three. Halter's out front, Crump into second place. All over the track there, but it looks as if Jason Crump has read this just about right now to get second place. Really Halter, the Norwegian, is going to make his first appearance in a final. And really Halter in red looks as if he's taking this semi final by storm. Jason Crump is going to clinch second place in yellow. Disappointment for Andreas Johnson, but Jason Crump makes it to the final in second place. Really Halter's through to the final in front, but Crump has done enough to clinch second place in the world for 2002, and Jason Crump could achieve his ambition ultimately, perhaps tonight, of winning the Grand Prix here in Australia. But Rudy Holter, that man with the chequered flag, is the man that certainly taken this stadium by storm at the moment. Tough race here, confirming the lineup and takes Greg Hancock, the American, on the inside in red. Michael Carlson, the Swede, in blue gate two. Lucas Dribble, champion. Oh, they're creeping again, nearly touching the tapes there, but not this time in red. Greg Hancock, a brilliant start by him. Oh! oh up completely, and down they go. One, two, it seemed to me that it was Lucas Dribble that locked up, left nowhere for anybody else to go. And, well, Lucas Dribble is on the deck, and so too is Michael Carlson. I don't think it was Michael Carlson's fault. I think it was Lucas Dribble that locked up there. Greg Hancock was way out in front, and we have an injury, I fear. Yeah, both riders down, they look like they've hit pretty hard there. There we see from the outside, that's uh, Scotty Nickel spike. There's Dribble coming into picture. He's desperate, he's made a decent start, but Nick, Greg Hancock's well clear, but I think just Michael Carlson gives uh, um, uh, Lucas Dribble a bit of a shove. Then, of course, all of a sudden, Dribble's nearly running in the back of Hancock, spins it round, nearly a 360, lifts. Michael Carlson's got nowhere to go. Crash, down both riders go. Tough call here for the ref. Hancock on the inside, he's clear. Here the boys on the inside, blue helmet colour, bashes into the rider there in the white helmet colour. He spins it round. Next minute he's out of control. Could have been a lot worse that, but certainly both riders hit the ground with a lot of force. Well, referee Tony Steele will be watching this to decide whether there's any exclusion, Kelvin. Who would you exclude? Well, that's a tough call. I think uh, Carlson just nudges Dremel as he nearly pushes him into the back of... Uh, um, uh, Greg Hancock and of course he over overturns it here we see it again Hancock's away clearly off the inside Dribble's made a decent start from gate three comes across Carlson bashes into uh, Dribble pushes him nearly in the back of Hancock spins it round and then the boys in the helmet colours blue and white just literally crash into each other um, uh, I, I think has finished in the top five in four out of the last five rounds this spell now he's back to his best. Away they go, just two riders battling for a place in the final. Scott Nichols on the outside goes wide. They stay clear of each other. They know that if they avoid accident and avoid mishap, they're both through to the final. This is a race that doesn't really matter. They both know they're there. But next time out, it'll be for real, Kelvin. Absolutely. Uh, Scotty Nichols giving uh, Greg Hancock all the room in the world here, riding mid-track to the outside. And uh, no competition here for places. Almost a show race. He almost like they're in the same... Well, they are in the same team in the Grand Prix. But uh, certainly in a few moments' time, when this race is all over, it'll be very different indeed. These boys have been going at it hammer and tongue. Yes, yeah, certainly a great effort. Greg Hancock, though, a world champion before. I wonder if he'll be the Grand Prix winner here. It's going to be a highly competitive final. Whatever happens now between these two, with just over a lap to go. Greg Hancock in the red helmet colours. Head Scott Nichols, the surviving Brit in yellow. Nichols on his way to his first final. Greg Hancock who's uh, certainly had a magnificent spell throughout the Grand Prix. And Greg Hancock is going to win this one. The chequered flag beckons. Greg Hancock looks back. Scott Nichols, he sees in his way. They can both afford to do wheelies and salute the crowd. And they both take the chequered flag. Well, the final is still to come. But these two, Greg Hancock and Scott Nichols, it's going to be quite a final. They join Rudy Holter and Jason Crump. Will it be celebrations for Australia? Will it be stars of the season? The final race of the season, the final race of this Australian Grand Prix. Rennie Holter never made a final before from Norway, goes to the inside. Greg Hancock in blue has finished in the top five in four out of the last five, but hasn't won a Grand Prix for 15 rounds. September 2000 in Denmark, his last win. Just Sky Sports as we bring you the final of the Australian Grand Prix here in the Stadium Australia. Away goes our starting marshal. What Scott Nichols in yellow on the outside. Front lifts on the inside. Into pole position goes Greg Hancock in the blue helmet colours. Round the outside in white. That's Jason Crump. Crump is battling right to the back is Scott Nichols. Oh, a real battle out front now is going to ensue. Go on, Scotty. He's come through to second place. 
Greg Hancock's out front, Crumpy's into second place, Scott Nichols rode really hard, they get through to third place, but uh, at the moment it's Hancock out front. Plenty of bumps on the track now, but Greg Hancock, the American, coming under pressure from Jason Crump, but oh, Scott Nichols great moves move. into second place, Scott Nichols now. Could he be set for a gold medal? Scott Nichols is chasing Greg Hancock. Crump is back in third. This race is not over. A lot's going to happen yet, but Hancock in blue leads. A lap and a quarter to go here in Stadium Australia. They're bouncing, they're bumping, they're going everywhere. But now Greg Hancock in blue. Can Crump come with a late run round? the outside he's going to challenge Scott Nichols Nichols into second place Greg Hancock in the lead oh, all Hancock's on the final speed Hancock Nichols oh. is coming Nichols could do it oh. no he hasn't Greg Hancock just wins Scott Nichols second Jason Crump third a punch and glory for the American his first Grand Prix victory for 15 rounds Greg Hancock from the USA has won but how desperately close for our own Scott Nichols in second place. What a finale, what a Grand Prix, what a race, what a result. Fantastic ride there from uh, Greg Hancock, but superb effort from Scotty Nichols coming through to second place. Just by half a wheel he got beaten on the line. Terrific evening for him. And uh, we see the, the official result there. Yes, Greg Hancock the winner, Scott Nichols second, triumph, brilliant for Scott. Jason Crump third, disappointment for the Australians. Really Holter's first ever final. But, but you're number two in the world now anyway. Yeah, you'd be disappointed about that, but I'm pretty happy, so. No, well you should be. The other guys. Uh, well done, Jason. Scott, what can I say? You've been going like lightning all night. Yeah, it was, um, oh, I'm delighted with that. I mean, so close to getting first there, but at least the only bloke in front of me was GSR teammate Greg, so perfect end of the season for me and obviously for both of us, one, two. Absolutely. Right, I'm over the moon. You've just progressed, you know, throughout the whole season. You've got a little bit better each time, so you must be very proud. Yeah, I am real lucky. You know, I had a little bit of luck tonight with the semi-final, but then I've had my fair share of bad luck, so... And this is going to hold you in good stead, perhaps for next year, the selection process. Yes, I hope so. All right, British champion. Well done, Scott Nichols. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah! <laughs> Greg, 97 world champ, first GP uh, win for this year, you must be mighty pleased. Yeah, it's the first for a couple of years and uh, I mean, I, it's such a great feeling. We've been fighting all year trying to get everything just right and we've been inching our way up gradually and we made it at the end, so uh, go out with a bang. So well done to you and your team. How about those Aussies? Are you feeling a little sorry for them? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, they're on their home turf, but uh, you know, I'm happy to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Good racing. Thank you. Greg Hank.